The world just broke a new record on income inequality. The AFP is reporting, quote, the richest 1% of the world's population now own more than the rest of us combined, aid group Oxfam said Monday. 1%, the top 1% has more than the other 99%. That's absolutely incredible. They continue here and say, Runaway inequality has created a world where 62 people own as much wealth as the poorest half of the world's population, a figure that has also fallen from 388 people just five years ago. Yet again, this is unbelievable. Now, they say five years ago it was 388 people, that had as much wealth as the bottom 50%. 3.5 billion people! But remember, I think it was just last year that the number was 85 people. 85 people had more than 3.5 billion. Now it's just 62! So it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse! And then at the same time this is happening, we have people who literally argue we can't increase the minimum wage. It would give these workers too much money for they're not doing enough work to, to earn that money. They don't deserve that money. You can't raise the minimum wage to a living wage. There are people who exist today who argue you should work a full-time job and not make enough money to survive and pay for basic necessities. People argue that. These people aren't intellectuals as much as they're just, you know, puppets of the corporate establishment. They might not even realize that they're puppets of the establishment, but that's exactly what they are. You know, people on like CNBC and Fox Business Network who think they're so smart. People like Maria Bartiromo. Well, you can't raise the minimum wage because the way it will affect inflation and other issues and blah, 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 blah. You need me to repeat this for you? Top 1% has more than 99%. Top 62 people have more than 50%. 62 people, more than 3.5 billion people. Guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not some sort of Marxist, communist, whatever, who is in favor of everybody should get the exact same amount of money no matter what they do, and that's the end of the conversation. No, I believe in incentive structure. I believe that, you know, the CEO, if he works harder, busses ass, yeah, he should make more money than the janitor who's a... 17-year-old who's doing one of his first jobs. I get it, I get it, and most people understand that, and we're not unreasonable here, okay? But the reality is, right now it's unreasonable in the other direction. How much inequality, you know, is there no level that's not acceptable to you? That's my question. Is there no level where you go, you know, something's off there. Maybe something should be done here. And, you know, what do you think? Do you think that the people... The top 62 people who have more money than 50% of the world, oh no, they just worked that much harder. I don't even know what that means. No, they just worked really, 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 really hard. Uh, in practical, logical terms, that makes no sense. You cannot say that that person worked harder. When Look, I know people who work three jobs and they barely make enough money to get by. Some of the hardest working people I know, they barely get by. Never mind be in the middle class, never mind be rich. So there is no correlation between how hard you work and how much money you make. That is a myth. There is a myth of meritocracy that exists. And everybody needs to understand that. Your market value is not equal to your human value. And if you think that's the case, you're just a silly person, because what you're saying is, those 62 people who own more than 50% of the world, they just work that much harder, and as human beings, as people, they're worth that much more, and it just is what it is. It's like it's written in the laws of nature or something. When, again, they didn't necessarily work harder, and oftentimes, they were born into wealth, they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth, they know the right people, it's a mix of nepotism, and uh, circumstances you were born into, and sure, some of it is uh, how hard you work, but a lot of it is being in the right place at the right time, and there's a trillion and one reasons that could explain why somebody's at, in that position, but the bottom line is, that's not acceptable, okay? It's not okay. 
I'm still in favor of people who work hard getting rich, of course. But should it be within reason? Absolutely. Are you, when the stats are like this, are you getting rich at the expense of other people? Yes. And if you don't believe that, I honestly think you're ridiculous. Like, I don't think you've thought through this very much. And unfortunately, in this case, some of the people who are going to be, you know, most strident against us here are people who, uh, on other issues, we agree with and we align with libertarians, to be specific. So they'll be with us on social policy and, hey, no more imperialism and, you know, let's legalize weed and prostitution and gambling. Great. You're right on all that stuff. But then they see this stuff and they're like, no, but the way the market works and what you got to do is you can't have the interference from the government because then that leads to malinvestment and blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. You're ridiculous. If you look at these numbers and try to rationalize and work backwards from why it's okay, you're a clown. That's what you are. You're an ideologue. That's what you are. You put ideology above facts. These are the facts. The numbers are not acceptable. So what do we do? Well, we have to fight back against this somehow. Now, I know it's hard. The U.S. cannot and should not be responsible for the world. So is there much that I can do about, you know, uh, poverty in Burkina Faso or in... Uh, Botswana? No, there's there's just not. I wish I could help, but I, I can't. I, you know, we should take care of our shit. They should take care of their shit. I wish them all the best, but, you know, we gotta be practical about this. So, what needs to be done? Well, there needs to be grassroots movements all over the place, not just in the U.S., but people in other countries, too. They should take the lead on this and fight for this. There needs to be movements to, number one, end corruption. We gotta end corruption in our country, you know, at the international level, too. Uh, you know, just end corruption. In the U.S., we need an amendment to get money out of politics so that the government actually represents the people, that crazy idea, as opposed to just representing the rich elites and rigging the rules in their favor so they make more money. And we have stats like this. We need more unionization. That's another thing that's important. History shows that the stronger the unions are, the stronger the middle class is. We need infrastructure projects to rebuild our country. People all around the world in different governments, they need this too. They need to stop having corrupt politicians spend on nonsense and enriching themselves. They need to invest in their own people. We need living wage laws, not only in the U.S., but everywhere. We need universal health care and education to give people an opportunity and a shot. I get it. Some level of income inequality is going to exist, and some level is even healthy, because you want to set up the proper incentive structure where people who work hard can get rich, and people who don't, don't get rich. I don't want them in poverty. They could be off the floor, but they're not going to get rich, and I'm cool with that. But what we have right now is unacceptable. And if you look at those numbers and you're okay with it, I just don't think you're serious. I think you're ridiculous, and I think you're rationalizing an obviously fucked up system. And I don't think you have any interest in actually making this world a better place. Your concerns are elsewhere.